Hi, it's Martin. You know when there's allegations of child abuse? Jehovah Witnesses, some know, some don't choose to listen because of the propaganda that the Watchtower gives that this may be apostate lies or this may be fake news. And as we saw from the last video, the reaction of the victim pain and suffering that they had been through but Jehovah's Witnesses choose to ignore it and elders do anything they can to protect the governing body to make Jehovah's organisation clean and they will say that this is fake news but we know it's not fake news and this has been going on for a long long time and they still choose not to do anything and still victims still keep coming and have been hurt just emotionally whatever you could say in the English word is disgusting violent I remember being lifted up out of my bed I said to my dad I think something happened to me we didn't know how many other victims there were and still don't how many victims, Jehovah Witnesses, do you want? How many abusers do you want to abuse your children and have no safeguarding policies and the elders hiding things that don't protect your children and then it affects and screws up so many people's lives because of the organization's propaganda. For Jehovah's Witnesses tell their chilling stories of alleged abuse for the first time, one of them is Sarah Brooks. Sarah Brooks grew up a Jehovah's Witness in Pennsylvania, and she has an abuse story that has layers of cover-up. There was an elder who says that he was present when the elders worked to cover up her abuse. Hello, Jerry Bundy. Nice to meet you. I'm Martin. Likewise. My name is Martin Hawk. I live in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. I was a Jehovah's Witness for 38 years. When I became an elder, the first elders meeting, they brought us up to speed, and Sarah's case was brought up. They never mentioned the person's name who abused her. All I know, there was some kind of sexual encounter that happened in her past. Sarah claims that she was abused by a man and woman who were close to her family, and that she reported it to the elders of her congregation. Martin goes on to tell Trey what he alleges that he witnessed happened to the documentation of Sarah's abuse claim. A committee was formed by three local elders to investigate Sarah's case. They had been meeting with Sarah for several weeks, and she had been retelling the story over and over again. And they were taking detailed notes of how many times this abuse happened, how severe the abuse was. Shortly after that, she went to the police. The police got a warrant to come to the Kingdom Hall and look for records. The then top elder said, we bought a shredder, and uh, the headquarters had told us to shred our personal notes we have, you have made for the case. There you are. It was reported to the police. So did the elders respond to the police, Jehovah Witnesses? No. They were told by the Bethel to shred their records. They literally go through every description of what happened to the person that's been abused and write it down and go over it and over it, which is not, is a sick policy. Plus, they destroyed records of evidence to protect not the person that had been abused, but the paedophile that had abused her. This continues to go on in the watchtower. Them protecting the paedophile but not helping the victim. The two night special starts this Saturday. We're now joined by Sarah Brooks herself and Trey Bundy who investigated this piece. Nice to meet you both. Sarah, what was it like even watching that little piece back right there? I mean, it's definitely a trigger. It's difficult to watch. It was difficult to go through then. It's still just as difficult to go through now, but there's a weight that's been lifted off my shoulders and telling it and having people listen and to believe my story and to help me fight this fight later. Trey, 
Trey, when you started investigating this, at what point did you realize how big this actually was? We figured out pretty early in the reporting that uh, not only were the Jehovah's Witnesses covering up a lot of child abuse, but they were actually holding on to a database of names of child abusers all over the country. Uh, and that this database uh, had been secret, secret from the courts, secret from law enforcement, and that these perpetrators were out there. And that's what we know. So what, what's going on? There you are. Jehovah's Witnesses have been telling you that they're, and so is Mike and Kim, so is Mike and Cora, so is Rick been saying that they have a database of paedophiles and that they don't disclose it to anybody, even the police. You've got to say it's brave for the victim to give testimony of what happened, which proves that this is not fake news, but it continues in the Jehovah Witnesses. This is not something of picking on Jehovah Witnesses. It's been a formal Jehovah Witness wanting no more victims of being abused because it, it, they never get over it. The, abu the, the, the paedophiles are evil and need to be dealt with and children need to be safe. But what we see is that the watchtower doesn't care. What's going on with the database now? It's the subject of a fight in uh, civil court in California, and it's about to be the subject of a fight in civil court in other states where uh, survivors like Sarah are coming forward and, and uh, filing lawsuits against the watchtower. The watchtower wants to keep this secret. They don't want anybody to see what's in there. Uh, as far as we know, law enforcement hasn't gone after it, and the courts haven't had any luck getting it, but there's at least 20 years worth of in that database. And as you investigated with the Jehovah... So there you are, there is a database that the Watchtower is hiding Jehovah Witnesses. And you need to see the truth. And the truth is that it is rampant in this organisation. And it still goes 